up everybody, Ryan here with an extreme fig ultra review for you today because I'm feeling pretty extreme right now. I got some extreme sunglasses on, I got an extreme hat that says hardcore on it, and I got one extreme vocaloid and her name is Hatsune Miku. And And here she is, baby, right on the table, ready to be unboxed. I've also been eating these pretzel sticks. I'm talking butter braided pretzels. Better made butter braided pretzel. Better made baked butter braided Better baked better made butter braided pretzels. Anyways, let's do some extreme first person unboxing right now. Time to unbox, baby. Let's do it! This down. Wow. Why is it in there so? Kimono Miku. Anything else in the box? Oh, yeah, we got instructions, baby. Nice little background. There I go again, getting ahead of myself. Let's do this right because I told myself enough. A couple of reviews ago, I wouldn't tip the box over without leave that on. Now I can flip it over. It's a stand on, boys. There she is, the one and only. Look how gorgeous this is. Her bright blue hair looks brilliant with that white kimono. Huge! Look at the locks on her. That's pretty extreme. Those are some extreme locks. Here's some face plates, a couple little accessories, the booble wrap. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, our first first person unboxing. Oh, I forgot my glasses. I'm sure that was almost too extreme for you, but we made it through. And we got my first ever Nendoroid of Hatsune Miku. It's a rite of passage. Any person that owns a Nendoroid needs, absolutely needs a Hatsune Miku in their collection, baby. So without further ado, let's start the review. Big Ultra review. This is like the least extreme intense figure that I own. <laughs> it's Miku in a kimono, like it's supposed to be quiet and peaceful and meditative. <laughs> Leave it to Miku to save the day. This Nendroid was part of a restoration project between Tokyo National Museum and National Center for the P Promotion, ah, TNM and NCPCP for short. For every purchase of this little singer, a good smile was to donate 5% of its purchase price to the foundation. And by the looks of it, they uh, met their goal, and then some. Good job, Good Smile. Good job, everyone who purchased this. Good job, me. That's the sound of me patting myself on the back. But that's enough standing around and extreme first-person unboxings. This Miku is too pretty to be missing out on, so let's go over the details. In order to understand this Corin dress Miss Hatsune is wearing, not that Corin, or this Corin, we have to go back, like way back. <laughs> A little further. As in the title of this video, it's more like who is this Cody? I'll stop saying Corin Kimono rather than what is this Corin Kimono? Ogata Korin was born in Kyoto during the Tokugawa period in 1658. The lucky bastard was born into an uber rich family, which gave him the luxury to just laze around and practice art at his own leisure. But at least he had some true talent and put in some major hustle during his whole career till his death. Ogata's work was highly regarded and sought after. It included screens, scrolls, and pictorial decorations for ceramic pottery. And, of course, textile designs for fancy kimonos meant for the richer folk. His pieces left many pupils and an iconic art style that is still celebrated today. Hence this little pop-up history lesson and this restoration project in general. Oh, it's the dress! Her pearl white kimono drapes to the floor, covering her feet. And yes, she does have feet tucked under there. You can even remove them. In colorful hand-painted ink, autumn flowers like white plum blossoms are depicted all along the garment. A red ribbon matches the inner lining of the dress. She wears a black silk obi belt, traditionally wrapped in back. Her bright neon blue hair is a definite standout, as her long flowing twin tails are neatly bowed up. They're actually so long they brush off the ground. She's gonna collect some dead leaves with those boys scraping on the ground. She even has both a Chinese bellflower and a white plum blossom pinned alongside her bangs. 
Speaking of bangs, they almost messily cover her face, just peeking around her eyes, which are absolutely brilliant, as they glisten from the sunlight. Great, that covers her attire, but uh, what kind of goodies does she come with? Well, let's flip on over to her accessories and find out. Uh, well, for as big as her box was, on the price, you'd expect more to be inside. Oh, an insert. Looks familiar. But all she truly comes with, as for accessories goes, is a purple Chinese bell flower, which comes with a separate hand for holding. Fun fact, the flower symbolizes unchanging love, honesty, and obedience. Ooh. Last is Miku-chan's bright red Japanese oil paper umbrella, more formally called a Jano Megasa. Megasa. Jano Megasa. Something like that. For its bullseye design. Yep, that's it. A flower and an umbrella. There's some extra fun to be had with it. By the way, she technically only comes with one hand for holding it, so you gotta find the right hand to catch it on the other side with if you want her to be holding it, with uh, both hands. I use the one with her finger extended to hold it in place. Speaking of digits, she comes with a pair of delicately closed hands, and a pair that are playfully open. Well, her accessories aren't too exciting, but uh, what about her faceplates? Well, there's this one, the old standby blank expression. But that uh, she makes up for it with her gleeful expression. Then what I call her yeah! expression <laughs> with blushing cheeks and all. Wow, that was uh, pretty quick. Usually takes me a minute to go over Nendo accessories. Well, I'm sure you know what part's coming up next, so let's head on over to what I like and dislike about Miku Dayo. Yo, did somebody say leaks? I really want the one with her holding the leaks. What? Leak mobile! My first like has to be how bright and vibrant her hair is. As this is my first traditional Miku, in a sense I feel like her hair is way brighter than her usual counterparts. Uh, uh, what do I know? Every version of her has different colored hair. But out of all the figures on my shelf, she stands out the most out of everyone. Look at her! Her hair is a shining beacon! Speaking of her follicles, she is also my first Nendo that can be stood up without a stand. No need to worry about her toppling over, just prop her up on her twin tails like a kickstand. The bottom of her kimono helps too. Even though her kimono in the original artwork is more detailed, first I'm giving it a pass because, like a true gentleman, I don't expect Nendos to get as high detail like a full scale would, and then I'm giving it a big hearty like. That means the kimono's good. It's what you buy this Miku for. It almost has a glassy pearlescent look to it, which gives it a nice soft off-white coloration. I loved posing her with the umbrella, it's like that extra little chef's kiss. Next, the covering hand and snickering faceplate combo are kawaii as f I do have a few little gripes on the side, like the hand holding the flower doesn't have her pinky extended like in the artist drawing! Her extra arms can get a little confusing when swapping them around. Since they all look the same, at times I wasn't sure which arm was supposed to go on which side of her. And the shoulder doodads sometimes crease up and don't line up right. Lastly, I thought my luck was starting to look up. I really was hoping I wouldn't have to say this anymore, but the stand don't want to stand. She pops right out of the peg every time. And it's super annoying. But it's only a great because at least she can stand on her own two feet. Plus she ain't got no fancy poses anyways. Last up is my dislikes. Oh, dislikes? Did I say dislikes? Why would I have that category written down? Of course there's nothing to dislike about everyone's favorite, most universally loved, golden voice, best-selling Vocaloid Idol ever. No dislikes. No dislikes for Hatsune Miku. Well, I guess it's time to go to the last segment of this review. The ratings. Alright, watch this. She'll dance to anything. Here we go. Just drag it and drop it. Look at her. Ah! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she's having an aneurysm. Okay, where was I at? So this is the part of the review where I pull three random categories out of my booty, give my thoughts, then collectively and nonsensically give her a final score out of five. Yo homes to the first category! Quality. You know how it do. Besides the wonky stand, she's built like a Chevy boy. 
Take her off road and get her covered in mud. Pop a trailer hitch on her and tow you and your buddies four wheelers on her. Do some loop de loops. She's built to endure the toughest trials. Well, I mean, she's practically one solid piece, so she holds up. The paintwork seems to be in order. The pinstriping is the cleanest I've seen on a Nendo thus far. And all the paintwork on her kimono blends in very nicely. Just be careful not to scrape her twin tails and the bottom of her dress on the ground. Also, props to the umbrella for feeling well made. Next up is photographability. I really want to take her out into the snow this winter. I think the glossy white and bright red will absolutely shine in the powdery snow and look super clean. With her secondary faceplate, as she casts her eyes to the side, you can mix up the poses and have her facing away from you. For that over the shoulder look. Blue steel. Go ahead and toss your other favorite Nendo's noggins on her body. This faceplate also works great with other Nendoritos. She goes well with flowers and other foliage, preferably cherry blossoms or red maple trees for the best results. Okay, the last category is my favorite Miku meme, Miku Dayo. I'm giving Corin Kimono Miku 4.3 Miku Toasts out of 5. Final thoughts. So this one was pretty pricey. She was almost 70 bucks on Good Smile's official site. And for what she comes with, well, but I'm more than happy to have this elegant Miku in my collection. I feel like she's well worth her value. Plus, it's my first Miku Nendo. Alright, buy that one. And now I got two. Hey, peoples, Zenny Dio here, and I'm about to rattle off some fun facts for you. Did you know that liking and subscribing helps my channel grow and get noticed by the algorithm? And makes me happy. Commenting is also a subadashi thing to do. If you don't know what to say, what's your favorite Miku meme or song? And did you know that I have other social media, like Twitter, where I post updates and other random assortments? Instagram has more pictures of my figures and other stuff from my collection. I also have a Discord where I force memes down your throat. Only the real OG homies of the channel use my Hobby Link Japan affiliate link to financially support the channel by purchasing figures, model kits, and other random goods. Hey, that wraps up the review. And if you liked this one, you should check out the Bishujo Remix Miku, where I opened a box with a turkey carver. So as always, much love, you're the best. Have a great day, everyone.